for you. The day that Lady Decade first graced your monitor was the most important day of your life. But for me, it was Tuesday. Street Fighter 2 is the most influential fighting game ever made. The game and its iterations have become synonymous with 90s arcades and 16-bit home consoles, which makes it all the more surprising that the ultimate home edition of the video game from the period was never converted to run on a Super Nintendo or Sega Mega Drive, but instead could only be played on alternative hardware. In today's video, we are going to be covering the history of the most refined iteration of the 90s classic, discussing the new features and improvements that were included in the game, but equally as important, looking at this installment's many crazy ports and the best way in which this game could be played at home. I am Lady Decade and this is the story of Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo, a necessity for gracious living. 1991 would be the epic year for gaming in which Street Fighter II The World Warrior would hit arcades. The title, which is credited for revolutionising the fighting game genre, would forever etch a place in players' hearts for all that it brought to the table. A colourful choice of eight playable characters with deep movesets to choose from, a further four bosses to defeat, and intense one-on-one -on -one player versus player combat. This video game was the title that would inspire all other fighters going forward. Something else that was unique about this video game was the regular revisions it would consistently receive that would continue to build and improve the game. The first of these came in 1992 and was named Street Fighter 2 Champion Edition. The game would be rebalanced and would feature several improvements. For example, the four boss fighters from The World Warrior were all made playable. Further to this, mirror matches were made possible, allowing two gamers to select the same character. Through fine-tuning, more details were tweaked, such as minor graphical changes, colour improvements and character portraits being redrawn. But this wasn't even Street Fighter 2's final form that year. Post Champion Edition 1992 would see the release of Street Fighter 2 Turbo Hyper Fighting, a version of the title that was swiftly created in response to the Taiwanese pirates who had released the illegal Rainbow Edition of the game. The bizarre glitchy rum hack featured many oddities, such as characters being able to fire off multiple projectiles at once and switch out fighters to another mid-play. But amongst this unbalanced mess was an increased play speed, a change to play which arguably made the illegal version of the game much more fun to play than Champion Edition. The game that was fired off in response, Street Fighter 2 Turbo Hyper Fighting, would be many gamers' favourite version of the game yet, as not only would it feature a faster play speed, but the game would contain new special moves for certain characters, and the game's balancing would be even further refined. Wow! While Street Fighter 2 Turbo Hyper Fighting was in development, another version of the game was being developed simultaneously. Super Street Fighter 2 The New Challengers, which, well, introduces new challenges. This 1993 offer would be the first game released for Capcom's new CP System 2 arcade hardware, and as a result would allow Street Fighter 2 to feature more sophisticated graphics and audio over previous editions of the game. Super Street Fighter 2 would include an all-new opening sequence, new music and sound effects would be included, and the game would receive a new announcer and new voice samples to represent certain characters. The game would also bring along with it a new scoring system that tracked combos, first attacks, reversals and recoveries, rewarding bonus points each time one of these feats was pulled off. 
Each character was also given more colour schemes to choose from, but most memorable of all about this version of the game were the four new selectable characters along with their accompanying new backdrops. While this version of the game didn't feature the play speeds that Turbo did, all of these new changes and the addition of Kami, Fei Long, DJ and T-Hawk were certainly enough reasons to get players more excited about a new version of Street Fighter 2 than ever before. This entry would end up being the last time we would see an iteration of the game that would be converted to run on the popular 16-bit platforms of the era a la the Super Nintendo and Sega Mega Drive, but the arcade and other formats would get an even more refined version of the game. Which of course brings us to Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo. 1994 would be a year in which Street Fighter Mania was at fever pitch, with even a high budget live action movie set to hit cinemas at the end of that year. Before we get to that though, we would see one more iteration of the classic game that would not only build on what had previously been established, but would continue to milk the success of the Street Fighter brand for all that it was worth. But surely everything had been done with the game, so what was left to include? Like Super Street Fighter 2 before it, Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo would be an iteration of the game that was developed to run on Capcom's newer, flashier Capcom System 2 arcade boards, with this version of the game first popping up in Japan on the 23rd of February 1994. The fifth version of the game, which had seen release in a space of fewer than four years, would include new mechanics that had not been seen in previous versions of Street Fighter 2. One of the new features of the game was that this would be the first arcade version of Street Fighter 2 to feature adjustable play speeds, a move that was implemented in response to many fans preferring the speed of hyper fighting to the slower Street Fighter 2 The New Challengers that was released later. So, through system configuration by the game's operator, free select could be enabled so that Street Fighter 2 Turbo would offer gamers four play speeds to choose from. But this was just the tip of the iceberg in terms of new features. Another big change to the game was the introduction of Super Combos, a new type of special move that would allow players to perform unique and more powerful versions of the character's special moves. These are executable under certain conditions and allow fighters to strike an opponent multiple times. In terms of the conditions under which these attacks can be utilised, these moves function in tandem with players' super combo gauge, yet another new feature that was created for Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo. The gauges, which are located at the bottom of the screen, can be filled up as the fighters pull off basic moves and special techniques against their foes. When these meters are finally filled up, they are replaced with the word super, meaning that it is now possible to perform the super combo techniques. By inputting specific commands and pulling off the attack, the gauge is reset to zero. However, if a fighter KOs their opponent using one of these techniques, the background flashes red and yellow to celebrate the occasion. But wait, there's more. On top of the mechanical changes that I have already documented, there would be further new features, such as fighters being able to recover from throws and land on their feet, and the introduction of air combos to the franchise. What this means is that if a fighter uses the first hit of a combo to propel their opponent into the air, skilled players can jump in pursuit of their launched opponent and continue to hit them for the duration of a jump. Extra hits will give the performer of an air combo additional momentum in the air, and smaller lighter fighters such as Dal Sim can stay airborne for longer than heavier fighters such as Zangief. The roster of fighters from which gamers were used to choosing from would also see revisions. For example, by inputting codes, players can choose between playing as the Super Turbo version of a fighter or the earlier versions that were included in Super Street Fighter 2. 
The big difference between the two is obviously the newer versions can perform super combos, but the older versions of characters have some unique advantages too, such as Ryu and Ken having brief moments of invulnerability when performing Hadoukens. So, from a certain point of view, the roster number had doubled from 16 to 32. Well, 32 if you do not include the title's secret fighter, and perhaps the largest draw that would generate the most significant interest in this version of the game. Of course, I am talking about Akuma, the intimidating secret unlockable final boss for the game, but the development story of how we got Akuma is arguably as interesting as his inclusion. Video game publication EGM, which has become infamous over the years for their April Fool's Day jokes, would make history when they would publish a now iconic article back in 1992. The magazine would provide players with information on how to take on the apparent unlockable secret boss who could be found at the end of the game. The article would go on to describe a convoluted method and series of feats a player must achieve within a round of Street Fighter 2 to take on the mysterious character known as Shen Long, a fighter who appears to be referenced in Liu's win quotes within the game. The Shenlong hoax would be spread worldwide to lead many players searching for this mythical character within the game. With the real truth to this story being that Ryu's cryptic win quote was nothing more than a poor translation, where the words Shenlong should have instead said Shoryuken, the name of one of Ryu's iconic moves. But sadly, Shenlong was nothing but fake news. Still, the accidental inclusion of the name Shenlong sparked an incredible amount of intrigue in this completely non-existent character, with there even being considered for him to be included in the upcoming Street Fighter movie video game. While initially a hoax inspired by nothing more than a mistranslation, the story of these events would make its way over to Japan to the very team who worked on the Street Fighter 2 games. The EGM article sparked particular interest from Noritaka Funimizu, a designer and planner who had worked on previous iterations of the game. He brought the story to Akira Yasta's attention, the man who had created many of Street Fighter's characters. The pair wanted to create a character to please the fans who had fallen victim to EGM's April Fool's Day joke, so what better way was there to do that than create a new, powerful character whose skilled players could face off against at the end of a Street Fighter game if they were able to achieve a range of specific in-game feats. This is how Akuma was born. Akuma was designed to appear as an evil looking character, but still one who looked drastically different to the regular bosses who had previously been included in the game. The fighter with his links to Shenlong and Liu had a design to match him featuring dark red hair, a dark skin tone, glowing red eyes, with him wearing prayer beads around his neck and a dark grey karate gi. To get a matchup against this mysterious and really powerful character, players must not only get all the way to M. Bison without using a continue, but also achieve a high score and reach this final fight in under 25 minutes. Only then does Akuma reveal himself, with him KOing the imposing Bison, leading to a tougher final battle. To make this event all the more epic and mysterious is that while the stage's background theme changes to match the battle, Akuma has no name under his life gauge and his character portrait is simply plain black. It seems Capcom tried to make this experience feel as much Shenlong-like as possible. Epic! Apart from getting to face off against this demonic looking foe, it is also possible to play as Akuma in the game via inputting a specific code on the player select screen. This involves highlighting Ryu for 3 seconds, then going to T-Hawk for 3 seconds, then Guile 
for three seconds and then Kami for you guessed it three seconds. And then finally going back to Ryu and waiting for another three seconds. After this players must hit the start button and all three punch buttons at once and the Kuma will now finally be playable. So that just about rounds up everything that the arcade version of Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo would include within the game. As highlighted earlier, the title would never be converted to run on 16-bit platforms, which could have been for several reasons. Firstly, newer, and more powerful hardware now existed that Capcom perhaps felt could have done Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo more justice than the 16-bit platforms. Or perhaps it was just the case that the company felt they already saturated the market when it came to Street Fighter 2 on those platforms already. But for whatever reason it may be, Capcom instead would convert the ultimate version of their game to run on different hardware. Perhaps the most famous and coveted of these conversions would be the port of the game that would be created for the 3DO. This version of the game is often celebrated as the quintessential title that is worth owning for the hardware. So, how faithful to the arcade is this game? When you compare Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo for the 3DO interactive multimedia player with that of older 16-bit versions of Street Fighter 2, there are indeed some massive improvements. This port, which was released on the 13th of November 1994, not only included all the new mechanics and the new character Akuma, but the 3DO conversion also included sprite work, which much more faithfully replicated the arcade experience than with any home game that had been seen before. While this was the case, there are more pros and cons with this version when compared to older home ports. There are still caveats that hold it back from being arcade perfect. I mean, well, there are even caveats that in some ways make the old Super Nintendo Street Fighter games more impressive. The issue I am referring to is the lack of inclusion of parallax scrolling within the 3DO port of the game, making the stage backdrops look completely dead. Characters are also missing some of the animations included in the arcade version, and the older Super Street Fighter 2 versions of each fighter are not present at all in this conversion. I feel though that this version of the game also features one huge improvement, even over the original arcade version of Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo, and that is the CD quality remixed versions of the famous Street Fighter 2 soundtrack. These new versions of the music were originally found in the FM Towns computer version of Super Street Fighter 2 The New Challengers, although it is awesome that they can once again be found here. This version of the game has some completely new remixes too, such as Akuma's theme for example, with the fighter obviously not being included in the older New Challengers game. Another issue with the game though is obviously that standard 3DO controllers feature fewer buttons than what is ideally needed to enjoy Street Fighter. But a six button controller produced by Capcom was produced that is compatible with the hardware, which sadly has a ridiculous layout. So the arcade and 3DO versions were obviously the most famous ones out there, but what else was there? The game would also be playable on PCs via MS-DOS. This version of the game, which was developed by Eurocom and published by GameTech, saw release in May of 1995. While not a bad porting of the game, there is a glaring issue which relates to the game's resolution. To put it simply, the character graphics data that was ported straight from the arcade version has been placed on backdrops where they appear larger than they should on the narrow screen. This leads to issues such as the distance between two fighters being shorter than one would expect with a Street Fighter game, thus changing the play and feel of the game. There were also glitches aplenty, so a patch file was distributed that would be applied to the 1.5 retail version of the game and beyond. Still, this version of the game did a much better job than the 
embarrassing conversion that you can play on the Amiga CD32. This version of the game, which was ported by Humansoft in 1996, is a nightmare to play due to its ridiculously jerky animations, rendering this port of the game practically unplayable, in my opinion. Let's just say there is a good reason people always talk about the 3DO version, but not this one. What a hideous mess of a game! While by 1997 Capcom had moved on to working on Street Fighter 3 games, the Marvel crossover games, the Alpha series and the Polygonal EX series alongside Attica, versions of Street Fighter 2 would continue to pop up despite people being somewhat burnt out with the Street Fighter 2 series by that point. We had moved on to more technically impressive games and more powerful hardware by that point. That year, the game would pop up within Street Fighter Collection, released on both the Sega Saturn and hugely successful Sony PlayStation, appearing alongside the new Challengers and a Street Fighter Alpha 2 Gold. Reviewers at the time noted that the collection offered fairly accurate ports of the game, but that the game was no longer considered cool in 1997. Most critics stated the game was not worth buying as the collection offered nothing new beyond nostalgia value. You know what they say, you can't spell ignorant without IGN. Moving into the new millennium, Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo would make its way onto the super powerful Sega Dreamcast, with Japanese gamers having the opportunity to play the game online for the first time. Released under its Japanese title, Super Street Fighter 2 X for matching service, the game was made available exclusively via mail order. Players could use an analogue modem to take advantage of Sega's matching service. The port is considerably more accurate than the PlayStation and Sega Saturn versions, as almost nothing was changed aside from the score display. It features additional speed settings including faster speeds, speeds 4 to 6, and a very slow speed, speed 0, that doesn't remove any frames. So a case could be made that this was the best version of Street Fighter 2 yet. Since the first decade of Street Fighter 2, versions of Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo have continued to find their way into compilations right up until this day, with improvements in technology making this a far less interesting and impressive feat than it once was, with modern conversions of the game replicating the arcade version more accurately than ever before. There are now even newer versions of Street Fighter 2, such as Ultra Street Fighter 2 The Final Challengers, but the majority of people profess the 1994 arcade version of the game to still be the ultimate iteration in the series. But the fact that we are now 30 years removed from the release of Super Street Fighter 2 and there are still new versions being made to this day, this all just stands testament to how important this title was. So I am Lady Decade and that was the story of Street Fighter 2 Turbo. And if you enjoyed this video, I did a video recently on Street Fighter Rainbow Edition and another on the illegal demake of Street Fighter Alpha 2. So as is usual at the end of my videos, like, subscribe, comment, hit the notification bell and all of that good stuff. And I also always like to answer a question from one of my patrons. So today's question is from Wesley Tomatz and they ask, is there a game with great mechanics slash gameplay that you couldn't bring yourself to complete due to poor story poor story or writing and likewise is there a game with a great story that you couldn't bring yourself to complete due to bad gameplay so um you'll have to bear with me because i'm getting a very sore throat so for me there is one game which actually answers both of those questions and that is bravely default um which at first I loved the gameplay all the way through, I loved the job classes, I liked the levelling up and I really liked the story until 
it does a weird like time loop thing where it takes you back and you start playing the whole game all the way through again same battles same bosses everything and i just thought what the hell it's literally mugging me off either finish the game where it was or vary it up a bit it it was it just basically ruined that game for me and i never finished it and i can't think of any other games that answer those two questions quite like bravely default does um so if you would like to have your question answered at the ends of one of my videos then please consider backing this channel over on patreon thank you very much and see you all in the next video